Hey everyone, this video is going to be going over the tree is dying passage and it's going to be focusing around some of the skills we've been practicing throughout this semester. Now, this passage and this activity is particularly important because the tree is dying passage will be on an upcoming checkpoint, but it's also going to be on your semester final as well. So let's go ahead and get into this activity. You can have this open and you can be working on this as we go through and then pause it, or if you want to watch through the entire video and then do it afterwards, that's okay too. All right, let's go ahead and get started. In this passage, Jem and Scout have decided that they need to thank the person who has been putting gifts in the knot hole of the tree. They write a thank you note and plan to deliver it by leaving it in the knot hole. The next morning, on the way to school, he ran ahead of me and stopped at the tree. Jem was facing me when he looked up and I saw him go stark white. Scout! I ran to him. Someone had filled our knot hole with cement. Don't you cry now, Scout. Don't cry now. Don't you worry. He muttered at me all the way to school. When we went home for dinner, Jem bolted his food, ran to the porch, and stood on the steps. I followed him. Hasn't passed by yet, he said. Next day, day, Jem repeated his vigil and was rewarded. How do you do, Mr. Nathan, he said. Morning, Jem, Scout, said Mr. Radley as he went by. Mr. Radley, said Jem. Mr. Radley turned around. Mr. Radley, uh, did you put cement in the hole in that tree down yonder? Yes, he said. I filled it up. Why'd you do it, sir? Tree's dying. You plug em up with cement when they're sick. You ought to know that, Jem. Jem said nothing more about it until late afternoon. When we passed our tree, he gave it a meditative pat on its cement and remained deep in thought. He seemed to be working himself into a bad humor, so I kept my distance. As usual, we met Atticus coming home from work that evening. When we were at our steps, Jem said, Atticus, Look down yonder at the tree, please, sir. What tree, son? The one on the corner of the Radley lot coming from school. Yes. Is that tree dying? Why, no, son, I don't think so. Look at the leaves. They're all green and full. No brown patches anywhere. It ain't even sick. That tree's as healthy as you are, Jem. Why? Mr. Nathan Radley said it was dying. Well, maybe it is. I'm sure Mr. Radley knows more about his trees than we do. Atticus left us on the porch. Jem leaned on a pillar, rubbing his shoulders against it. Do you itch, Jem? I asked as politely as I could. He did not answer. Come on in, Jem, I said. After a while, he stood there until nightfall and I waited for him. When he went in the house, I saw he had been crying. His face was dirty in the right places. But I thought it odd that I had not hurt him. All right, so the first part of this is pretty easy. All you are doing is recalling what happened in the passage and writing a brief summary. Uh, so go ahead and put this in your own words if you need to go back and re-listen or uh, reread it yourself, feel free to do so. Our next section is going to be based around figuring out what the word bolted means. So let's go ahead and the first thing we need to do is go back to the passage to see bolted in context. And here it is. Someone had filled our knot hole with cement. Don't cry now, Scout. Don't cry now. Don't you worry, he muttered at me all the way to school. When we went home for dinner, Jem bolted his food, ran to the porch, and stood on the steps. I followed him. Hasn't passed by yet, he said. Next day, Jem repeated his visual and was rewarded. So now we're going to go ahead and walk through the steps here. So step one, contact zone. What's going on here? So... We know that Jem is like running and trying to catch Mr. Radley or Nathan Radley as he passes by the house. So let's go ahead and just briefly summarize what's going on in that highlighted passage. All right, so here we go. Jem is eating his food quickly and then running to the porch in hopes of spotting Nathan Radley. Now, that's what's going on in the contact zone. Then we go to step two. We're looking closely at how the word is being used in the sentence. So what is the word bolted telling us more about if we go to it in the passage here? Well, it's telling us more about how he's eating his food. Um, and so it's an action here. So let's go ahead and type that down. So the word tells us more about how Jem is eating his food. 
All right. And then I move to my next step. Is it positive, negative, or neutral? So in how it's being used in the sentence, it's talking about how he's eating his food. There doesn't seem to be a strong feeling tied with it. So we're going to go ahead and put neutral. And then we know that he's trying to rush to meet Nathan Radley. So what word best replaces it? the word bolted in the sentence if we know he's trying to eat quickly. Go ahead and put your best guess down on this line here. All right, so there could be many options. Uh, you just need to put one, but some of the options might be devoured, gobbled, uh, something that indicates how quickly he is eating this food. So I'm going to go ahead and put devoured there. If you have a different word, but if it's a synonym, you're good to go for that one. All right, let's go ahead and move to our next uh, skill here, which is cause and effect and character to idea relationships. So here it says, examine a cause and effect relationship, which will help you understand why Mr. Nathan Radley cemented the knot hole in the tree and what effect it had on Jem. All right, let's go ahead and think this through. So first of all, we can most likely come to the conclusion that the tree is very much so alive. So you're in the next activity going to identify details that support that the tree is in fact healthy. Um, so we have to ask ourselves why Nathan would be cementing this knot hole. Now we know that the knot hole is being, somebody is leaving gifts in the knot hole. Most likely we can assume that somebody is Boo Radley. So why do you think Nathan Radley would want to cement the knot hole in knowing that? All right, take a minute, go ahead and fill that out. Now, just to uh, make sure you know how to edit this, if you double click, it'll bring you to a screen that looks like this and then you can add your text in. So let's go ahead um, and take a look. We'll, we'll do the rest of this together. So because Mr. Nathan Radley wanted to cut Boo off from the outside world. So if we're assuming the tree is very much so alive and it doesn't make sense to put cement in a knot hole to stop it from dying, uh, or you don't put cement in a knot hole when a tree is dying anyways, we can assume he's doing it for another purpose, and, and that seems to be to cut Boo off from the outside world. So he cements the knot hole, and because of this, look at the passage to see how Jem reacts. So see if you can find his reaction to this knot hole being cemented. All right, so as a result, Jem cries and is very upset by this. Now, some people might say like, oh, he's only upset because like he's not going to be getting all these surprises anymore from the knot hole, but it seems to be deeper than that. All right, in this next activity, this one's pretty easy. You're just going to identify details that prove the state uh, and the health of this tree. So again, if you double click on here, you can edit the box. So if you want to go and just copy and paste some details or write the details proving the health of the tree, you can go ahead and do so in those boxes. Let's go ahead and look at this drawing conclusion section next. It says Atticus knows the tree is healthy. Why then does he tell Scout and Jem that maybe it is? I'm sure Mr. Radley knows more about his trees than we do. To do this logically, you'll need to consider details about Atticus and the Radleys from outside of this passage. So we're asking ourselves, why Atticus, when he fully knows that the tree is alive, why would he say that quote? Uh, go ahead and see if you can come up with something and then check back in. You could pause the video, check back in to see if your answer is somewhat similar. All right, so for this one, we could write something along the lines of Atticus does not want the kids to continue to be obsessed with the Radleys. He wants the children to leave them alone. Atticus does not believe it is his place or the children's place to be judgmental. Now, a couple other things with this passage. Again, some people might think, oh, Jem gets so upset because he's no longer getting gifts. But it becomes clear that it's deeper than that. So Jem is starting to realize, one, he realizes that it's Boo Radley leaving the gifts. And then he's also starting to realize just how cruel it is that Boo Radley, one, has been forced to remain in the house for over 15 years. But then also that his brother does something so blatant to cut him off from the outside world. So clearly Boo was 
leaving the kids these presents. And that was really his only connection to the outside world. And now his brother Nathan is completely cutting that off, showing again he seems to be torturing this now, not kid anymore, this adult uh, for something that he did as a teenager. Um, and so Jem is starting to feel some empathy for Boo. He's starting to feel bad for Boo. And he's starting to realize just how unfair and unjust the world is. And he's been lied to. So he recognizes that Nathan Radley has lied to him about why he's put cement in the knot hole. And when you're a kid, you believe that adults tell the truth and that they act honestly and nobly. And here he's realizing that Nathan Radley is just blatantly lying to his face. And that's a hard, uh, a hard pill to swallow as a kid when you first realize that not all adults are truthful and that not all adults are looking out for your best interest. All right, so that is the skills builder for today. If you have any questions, please reach out to your teacher. Have a good one.